from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker. Or a convicted felon? No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The big picture. We have talked about people screwing around in every possible sense. We've done shows about people at their company Christmas party. We've done shows about people who uh, screw around uh, maybe with their mother-in-law, their father-in-law, or whatever. I mean, we've, we've done it all. Done it all. Told you about my own experiences in philandering. I've I've never put myself above you when you do that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, many of us have done it. That doesn't make me better or worse than you, and I'm not claiming I have been. I think I learned something through it, though. And And here's what it is. I don't understand why people need to be married and then they need to screw around. I just don't get it. I'm no prude. God, I love sex. I love going out and having sex. I love I have loved having a variety of people in my life. I've learned so much from so many people. It feels so good. I feel like I've had a rich life. Lots of human contact, lots of fun, lots of fun. And much of it was done when I was married or living with somebody, when I was bad, bad, bad. But here's my whole thing for you. I learned by being married and screwing around... I learned that there just is no reason to do this. I mean, most people get married because they're cowards. People get married because they're afraid to come home to an, what they call an empty house. They're afraid to come home and live by themselves. So they get married. And that poor sucker is going to have to live with the fact that now their job is to keep the lights on, to... You know, have hot food coming on a plate when that person comes home so that now they can continue dating whoever they want. And in fact, in some cases, making it even hotter for them because now they're doing something bad that they're not supposed to do. I will admit there have been times in my life, they go back now always, there have been times in my life where I was with somebody simply because I was afraid to be alone. Because I was a pussy. A pussy. So I got with somebody. I married them. I moved in with them. I dated them and said, oh, yes, it's monogamous, whatever. Because I was afraid to not do it. Or because I saw my parents living like that. and Like, this is the way it's supposed to be. And then I went and did bad things on the side. Why? Was it worth it hurting people like that? Was it worth it doing things like that? I will tell you in retrospect, it wasn't. In doing this show, I am never surprised. Never. 
when people call in and gleefully report all the things they're doing behind other people's backs. I've been hearing this forever, and I've been that person. But I finally realized that I don't want to live my life as a soap opera. I don't want to live my life having to hide. I don't want to live a double life. I don't want to constantly have to be making up explanations or making up excuses. And honestly, the biggest revelation I had in my life was loving myself and loving living alone with the one person who knows me the best and loves me the most. And that's me. It's the ultimate freedom. I can't tell you, as I look back on relationships that I had, about the regrets I have. And it's not even about hurting the people I might have hurt. Some of them don't even know I was doing something like this. So they were never hurt because what they didn't know didn't hurt them, I guess. But I think back on how I hurt myself. I was in relationships where I felt I needed to stay out late. Because I didn't want to come home to my own house. It went from one extreme to another. I got into a relationship so I wouldn't have to live alone. Then I got so angry or so fed up being with that person that I stayed out. Here I am with a beautiful house, always a beautiful place to live. Always, whatever I've lived, always a beautiful view, all good. And I would find myself having to stay out, having a few stiff ones. Or delivering a few stiff ones, if you know what I mean. Coming home late, coming home the next day. And the person I hurt the most was myself. Not the people I was with. I hurt me. If I need to lay pipe, to be able to spend nights when I want to be alone, nights when I want to be with somebody. Maybe I want to have company sometimes. Maybe I want to go see somebody at their place. To have the ultimate freedom. I have a hard time understanding why people get married, have kids, make commitments, get themselves into all kinds of debt, run the risk that half of or more of everything they've ever earned will be taken away from them. Then they go ahead and screw around. Why? It doesn't make sense to me. Does this make sense to you? Tom like it. 1-800-5800. Tom. Howdy, Tom. Howdy. I think you're an idiot. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Sounds like our board operator once again was overzealous. This time, blipping out the phrase laying pipe. You gotta be kidding me, pal. You gotta be kidding. Me. Really? Seriously? <laughs> no, no. I know it's not you, Art. It's not Art. It's the other guy. Please. Laying pipe, laying pipe, laying pipe. Please stop it. Stop. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, I, I I honestly believe that people who are offended by stuff like that have a dirtier mind than I do. I mean, what the hell is graphic about saying laying pipe? Please. You, you got to be kidding me. Whew. Outrageous. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Every couple of months we have one of these run-ins. It's it, it's outrageous. All right, why do people want to lay pipe? I don't get it. They they get married. They want to lay pipe for God's sake. Stephen on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Stephen. Yeah, well, I don't understand why people even get married in the first place, dude. Like. My buddy, luckily enough, uh, I introduced him to you, 
and he was going to get married. He's only 19. His first girlfriend, a bit like his first real, like, long-time relationship, wanted to get married. And I was like, dude, you know what? Before you get married, listen to Tom Likas. And uh, fortunately, he called it off and broke up with her. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to get him away from that chick for two years. Finally, he listens to you and, and then gets it. He, like, gets something snapped in his brain, and he's like, okay, cool. And now he's having more fun than, than he was. And I always tell him, like, dude, look at it back a year ago. How much fun could you have had knowing that all those chicks that you've seen and wanted to have sex with, you, you couldn't. You didn't. You wanted to stick with one girl. Why? I, 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 you know, again, uh, if you are religious or you're old-fashioned or you honestly, honestly, honestly can say that you will never, never, never get drunk and lay pipe with somebody else again, then fine, i get married, all right, fine. But how many of us can say that? Nobody. I, I mean, I do not. You guys who get married and need to f around are cowards. You're cowards, and and, and frankly, I had to get over that myself. You you had to get over yourself. You, you were going to get married. I was I was married four times. Holy crap! Four times and divorced four times, and I screwed around. <laughs> dude, four times. Oh my god, I could have. Yes. I, I, too much, dude. Yeah, but the point, here's my point. I finally, I finally had a breakthrough. I finally realized that I, I, I want to keep boning other chicks. That's what I want. Oh, yeah. And, dude, seriously, because of you, I remember I called you a couple months ago when I actually did have. Hey, watch why, your mouth. I, We're on the air. You were on the air. Oh, sorry about that. Um, but I asked you, like, why, like, why all these people, like, I was actually bagging on you because. I thought I was in love, but then I realized everything that you've been talking about, paying money for them to go do stuff, I mean, anniversaries, like, I mean, I, personally, I don't really remember anniversaries, and that's another thing that they complain about that you don't remember, and, dude, oh, my God, I I, I actually realized, man, I hated having a girlfriend. It it just, it blowed, but yet, you, like, a lot of people don't think about that because, they're in the relationship. They want to be with one person that they know that they can always get something out of, like, their... But it's just their selfishness. Person. They want to They want to have somebody there to keep the lights on at home, have somebody there to do the housework, have somebody there to be there on holidays and birthdays, Maybe. have somebody there to make meals for them or to go on vacation with. And, but then the rest of the time they want to continue acting like they're single and continue dating. And by the way, I'm saying this because I know a lot about it because I did it myself. It's like and that's, and that's why I'm learning from you and not making a mistake because you've already made the mistake for me. I mean, you better be absolutely certain, and that might mean you have to wait until you're 50 years old. You better make absolutely certain that you only want to be with one person, no matter what happens. And and you know what? There's very few people who can honestly say that. Certainly not the number who are getting married. Oh, no. but luckily, my parents have been doing great. They're 65 years old, been married over, what, 35 years now? And, dude, I've never seen my dad happier. Never. I've never been happier than I am today. <laughs> dude, oh, yeah. Well, Ben, it's great to talk to you, dude. I'll keep listening. Sure was. Thank you, you for the get a, a, a bong token. Uh, thank you, Jesus. You certainly can, Stephen. Here you go. Thank you, Jesus. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Stephen, on the Tom Likas show. Up, oh, Stephen went away. Let's say hi to Nick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Great. That's good to hear. Um, so I was listening to the program, and uh, I'm actually a new listener. My grandfather is a huge fan of yours because he's 80 years old and uh, says he's miserable but still lives life, like, uh, to the fullest, if you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, my question for you is uh, I'm hearing you talk about people in uh, 
you know, bad relationships where they go home, they they try not to go home because they want to avoid their significant other. They go out and cheat because they're not attracted to their significant other. That's not now, even it. They may still be attracted to them. They just want to have their cake and eat it, too. And I, I don't understand it. Right. But can you understand that um, certain people might have the mentality, the maturity, whatever you want to call it, that monogamy suits them? Because I've been with the same lady for five years. She rocks my world, man. Like, she's unbelievable in bed. She's a sweetheart. She motivates me. And I couldn't be happier. So it's like if I want to. Yeah, but but, but you're still young. You don't know whether you're going to be happy or not. You're 26 years old. Right, but um, I mean... Uh, by the way, when I was 26, I was saying the same thing about somebody. For how long were you dating her? A couple of years. A couple of years? Yes. Didn't cheat on her once? Not till the very end. But then I did. Because things just went sour? Or you're, you're saying that things <laughs> yeah, 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 will go sour? Uh, uh, at some point, for the vast majority of people, it's not even that they went sour. You want to have the light on when you come home, somebody to take care of you when you're sick, and fresh meat all the time. Right. Fresh meat, meaning new people to bone. Well, what if what if you guys just keep getting more and more innovative in the sack, you know, and just keep each other Because off, people you know? don't, you, you want to know something, people generally don't get more and more innovative in the sack as the years go on. At some point, you've pretty much seen and done all you're going to do together, and now you're just repeating. Hmm. And that's from your experience. Oh, Yes. Interesting. So when when's the burnout period usually? What well, it varies think? according I to who the my person is. It's about eleven or twelve years. All right. <laughs> That's but you see, even your father. Yeah. No, I know. I come from a lineage of men who uh, are not uh, committers. You know. Well, your mouth we're on the air. Or, oh, excuse me. Sorry, Jesus, sorry. Uh, pal, pal. Oh, my whole life. You were twenty-one when you met this chick. My whole life. What does that mean? When you start dating, when you were two. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. So in your whole wide experience of seven years, you didn't saw everything. Now you don't need anything new. Please. Well, I was with a lot you of You are showing ladies, your image. I was with Six, a lot seven, of different girls. How though, many, like, I can't even count. How many like, women? Stop. How You can't even count, please. I'm uh, dead serious, Tom. Yeah. I wouldn't lie to you. I'm what not that a liar. Twenty? Well over that, that was about junior year in high school. That's when Ooh, I kept going. Yes, well, uh, guess what? 21 isn't that much after that. Yeah, but you had your old college experience, my friend, and uh, college was good to me. Great mountains and great women. Again, Nick, I'm telling you, and by the way, if it doesn't happen to you, it can happen to her. That's very true, and that's, you know, something that... Uh, I don't know. Is the risk worth it, you know, being that vulnerable to somebody where that that is the potential risk that you have to, you know, put into perspective sometimes. And that's what I try to do is that I try to, you know, keep perspective that things can go wrong, but still enjoy my time with this girl, you know? Yeah, well, um, I understand what you're saying. But again, I I think at some point you're going to backslide. You're going to want new meat. Because really that's, that? that's mostly what I... Oh, laugh at me. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm not laughing. I just... I'm curious. I Because I believe like... the same thing. Do you remember the story I told about the woman who I went to New York and gave a $20,000 check to? A girlfriend from when I was 19? No. All right. Well, I told this story recently, and to, not to bore everybody else with it, so I'll just tell the, the very abbreviated version. There was a girl who I, I dated at 19. We lived together. We spent three and a half years together. And then I started uh, getting attention for doing a stand-up comedy act at a radio show. And a woman with the best breasts I'd ever seen in my life came up to me at the end of a comedy show and handed me the keys to her apartment and a crumpled up piece of paper with her address. And I got in the cab and I went over there after the show and didn't come out for two weeks. <laughs> and believe me, the, the, the woman I was with was, was as wonderful as she could possibly be. And even after I ended the relationship with this chick who I met... She invited me to come back and live in the apartment where we had lived together. She was too good to be true. 
Oh, wow. And what'd you do? Well, we didn't get back together because I was mortified at the way I had treated her. Right. And then years later, I came back and I said, you know what? I stayed in your place rent free. You fed me. You took care of me when nobody else would. Here's a check. Well, that's but, very noble. But well, I'm not trying to tell you I'm noble. What I'm trying to tell you is she was as good as go. And I did it to her. But couldn't that just be you? I mean, are you speaking on behalf I'm telling of like you, single? I'm telling you that I know so many people like this. It's definitely the majority. Hmm. It's not just me. It's your so father. Then, so then it's your, what's your, it's what's your, your father. It's your father. It's your grandfather. And it's other people, too. Yeah. No, I know. Man's a crazy creature like that. Animal. Right. <laughs> right. right. But um, so what? What's your uh, then? What's your uh, suggestion then in my situation of me being very happy right now? Just stay with it, have some fun. Don't live together. Don't get married, and just be aware that at some point the ride ends and you're going to get off. Fair enough. Stop telling people you're the exception to the rule. <laughs> I guess I might be a little bit arrogant if those are the statistics, Tom. I'm telling you. Hang on a second, Nick. Mark, what did you want to say here to Nick? I want to tell Nick that he should look in the mirror every morning and say, I want to stop having sex when I'm 40 because that's when she'll want to ha stop having sex. And if that's cool, <laughs> jump right in. Hmm. So that's how it is, do you think? I don't think. You know. <laughs> Nick. All right, fellas. Well, I really appreciate the advice, and uh, I'll continue listening to the show. I'm just new to L.A. from Santa Barbara originally, where I went to school out in Boulder, so I don't think we get you out there. Nick, but, listen um, to the professor. He's, listen to the professor, Nick. He's got you covered. Everything all right. He says you guys take care. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. I, I think Nick wanted to just get off the phone there. He just wanted to get off. That was more than he could handle. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Ray on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Tom? Great. I think the problem is too many of us want to get off, and that's, uh, that's, that's what you're talking about right now. Anyway, uh, I got a funny story. Uh, about 10 years ago, I was 23, and I was getting out of, uh, well, I was in a seven-year relationship at the time, engaged, uh, spent a year planning the wedding, and ended up uh, breaking it off about a week before the wedding was supposed to happen and uh, probably the best thing I've ever done for myself. I've, uh, I've had so many adults actually tell me at the time, people that were much older say, gosh, I wish I had the balls to do what you did and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I've had a great 10 years and, and I can't imagine my life, you know, as it would be if, if things didn't change at that point. Can you imagine what would have happened? You would have been one of these guys going to the Christmas party and saying, honey... <laughs> it's a no spouse party this year. Yeah, and that's the thing is, I, you know, I can't say that she was a horrible girl. She was great. We actually had a pretty decent relationship. I just, I was 23 years old, and I looked in the mirror one day, and I said, you know what? I'm not ready to do this, and, and I'm not going to do it. So it's been a good 10 years. I've learned a lot, been through a lot, been through a lot of women, and uh, I, it, I would recommend... You know, anybody in their early, mid, late 20s probably still not ready. And, you know, I'm still moving along here trying to figure it out. Ray, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. It's Kathy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Kathy. Uh, well, Kathy? Yes. Are you busy over there? <laughs> no, I'm hanging out. <laughs> I've been saying your name now for 10 seconds and uh, not getting any response. Oh, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, Tom. Um, well, I, you know, I, I called in because I just wanted to know if you can help me give some a man a backbone, like a spine. Um, I'm 26, and he's 40-something. You know, he, he lied to me. He said he was 30-something, but he believably looks 30-something. He's 40-something, and he's married. I didn't know he was married, so when we were together, I wasn't exactly sure. And so um, now I'm, he, he calls me, I love you, I wish that, you know, we could be together, I wish we could have more and this and that. But he's with this woman that doesn't love him. He's with this woman that does not care. I mean, she, 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 he, he said twice 
last year, and uh, and he's going on that same record again this year. And I would just like for him to make up your mind. I mean, he wants his cake, and he wants to have his cake and eat it too. And it's like, if if there's not, there can't be anything there. She doesn't even want to say hi or good morning to him in the morning, you know. But <laughs> what can I tell this guy? I mean, I'm 26. Well, yeah, so Kathy, I'm, Kathy, let's let's take let's take actual spinal surgery, okay? okay. Ever know somebody with back problems? Yes, I do. <laughs> and that pain doesn't go away. No, it doesn't. No. Right? And then you call the surgeon and you say, I'm going to get the best. You know, and you call, if you're here in L.A., you call like Cedar sinai or you call uh, City of Hope. You call one of the better hospitals and you, you want to get, well, here's what you want. You want the pain to end. So rather than fixing the spine you have, you say to the doctor, can you give me a new spine? What, what does the doctor tell you? What would the doctor say? You tell me. Uh, the doctor says basically impossible. <laughs> basically impossible. He can't give you a new spine. You have the spine you were born with. Right. <laughs> right? Now let's take that analogy to people. Okay. You can't give anyone a spine. No, you can't. Whether it's a real spine or a fictitious spine, you can't give them a spine. No, they have to have a spine. They have to have one, but you know, if everything else, the man is assertive. I mean, he gets out there, he gets it done. No, he's not. Business and no, he's not. I, you know, there are plenty of people. You know, some of the greatest sitcoms of our time, and I don't know if you watch television a lot, some of the greatest sitcoms go like this. This is a common thread that runs through many sitcoms, okay? okay. Competent person at work could be psychiatrist, mm -hmm. Bob Newhart show, could be teacher. Welcome back, Cotter. Could be. Uh, <laughs> that's him. That's him. They're teacher, great yeah. at work. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. at home, their life is out of control. There's a reason that's such a popular theme on shows. And that is true, yes. At, I mean, you know, the, he, this may be a name that nobody ever wants to hear quoted, but it was one of the great quotes I ever heard. Uh, Don Imus, mm -hmm. the radio personality who's returning to the air. I remember him. Remember him. Here's what he said when he was unmarried. He later got remarried. But when he was unmarried, he was asked, will you ever get married again? And here's what he said. He said, people with great marriages have lousy jobs. <laughs> okay. All right. And so what I'm trying to tell you here, and by the way, maybe you should have paid attention to his own advice. I don't know. But, but what I'm trying to tell you here is many people who are great getting business done by the way look at me self-made multi-millionaire top rated radio program oh, no yeah you're the business of course but, but married I mean, and divorced four times well then why can't okay this is what i because i'm going actually to his state because he's out of state and uh, i'm going to actually in the next weekend i'm going to let him know give him the ultimatum of course um i'm not going to be you know darling missing. and darling let me tell you something about an ultimatum okay it's a waste of time it's a waste of time. Yeah, but I, I want because to Because if, if he does what you tell him to do, you have now gotten into a relationship with a hostage. Ooh, okay. Yikes. Okay. You don't, don't give that. people an ultimatum. I learned this the hard way. You do what's good for you. And what's okay, good well, for you what? and what's good for you is not dating a married man. Exactly. I'm I am Indian. I mean I know trust me, I know this guy is not gonna grow a spine in two seconds. And he's not going to. He's not going to grow one period. Right. So I am ending it. I trust me. I, I'm not going through. But this no, 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 you're not ending. You just said you're going to go give him an ultimatum. Right. But no. I, no. In my mind, if I, you, you know, give him an ultimatum, darling, listen. I'm looking out for your self-esteem here, which I okay. really I shouldn't be doing. Tom like his misogynist talk show host should not be doing no, this. You're excellent, like this. I like this. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you see, I'm looking out for your self-esteem here. Okay. If you give him an ultimatum, he will pick his wife. And what does that do to you? It crushes me. Right. Don't let him do that. I won't. You're right. You, I will not. You just simply tell him it's over. I'm done. Goodbye. Who's going to have the high self-esteem then? <laughs> it's all in my court. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. I gave up giving ultimata a long time ago. You're right. I tell people I'm doing what's good for me. Goodbye. Excellent.
I'm and that way, uh-huh. you have you noticed my self-esteem is really high? Oh, I noticed that, yes. <laughs> okay. That's because I do what's good for me. Exactly. I don't try to get somebody who's doing what they think is good for themselves to do what's good for me. I do what's good for me. Okay, so let me ask you this, Tom. Um, I, I, okay, originally it was an ultimatum, and you know that's a really soft, kind of weak, you know, story to say I'm going to keep it going on. I am going to. I'm convinced to go ahead and end it. Should I end it over the phone, or should I still make the trip up there and say goodbye? I wouldn't waste 10 seconds on this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, it's done. You know what? He doesn't love you. He loves his wife, and that's why he's there. By the way, he doesn't love her very much either, but he prefers her to you. Right. Now, oh, that's okay. the reality, okay? Yes. He's chosen her over you. Over me. <laughs> right, right. and you owe him no courtesy no. no special treatment. You owe him nothing. Nothing. He, owes, From, he gets nothing. You're right. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you sent him a text message and then blocked his return text messages, that would be okay with me. That's okay. All right. And Why that's waste your time? time? Why waste your ga- ga- gas? is $4 a gallon. Why are you driving up to see him? Oh, my God. I was going to fly out and everything, but you know what? That can- I'm canceling that immediately. Don't. don't, don't you're, you're servicing him. You're still doing things at his convenience. That, yeah, I'm catering to him. He's not flying out to see me. I'm flying out to see him. So he's got a wife who, by the way, when he flies out to see you, she packs his bags for him. Mm-hmm. She's, oh, I'm going to miss you, honey. She drives him to the airport. She makes breakfast for him. Oh, yeah. She takes care of him. Yeah. Then then he flies out and he sees you, and you're taking care of him, and you're there. and, you, and but, but when you're not looking, he's on the phone in the bathroom. Honey, uh, the business is taking an extra day or so. Uh, I'll be he's back. He's on the throne. He's the king. Right. Oh. And what, what does that make you and his wife? Uh, a little peasant. Darling, I've been him. <laughs> you have. So I'm speaking as someone who is a professional philanderer. He well, doesn't deserve any consideration at all. He doesn't. And that is scandalous. And of course, it's stereotypical. He's also in the word as well. He's uh, on the side pastor and so on. But, but you don't get off the hook because you are an enabler, okay? You know, and, you're right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you let him do this stuff to you. Well, it does get ended. And I, and I wanted to know if it's No, an absolute, now it gets ended, but how long has this been going on? Uh, this has been going on. I found out that he was married um, two months ago. Two months and, ago? Yes, two months ago. And back and forth has been the phone calls, the pictures, and the text messages. Had, he, so said, had he said, I love you before that? No, he didn't. We were together, like, just for a few weeks. Uh, and he was, in, you know, I'm in L.A., and, of course, he's from out of town. And he, this was on business. And so we were together just for a short period of time. He goes back, and then he tells me, you know, I want you back in my life, and so on and so on. And then right just as, as we're getting ready to pick up, and I think uh, this might be the one, he tells me, uh, you know, I just need to let you know, I'm, I'm kind of married, you know, <laughs> like that. Oh, God. Yeah, um, I, I need you in my, you know, by the way, that phrase, I need you in my life. <laughs> that is so, I know. What, what does somebody that, really say? Let me interpret that for you. I need you in my life. <laughs> I just don't need you. Living at my address, living in my apartment. Calling me, tell, yeah, all don't that. Don't need you know, your, my, I need you in my life, but not my <laughs> children's life. I certainly don't want exactly. my wife uh, to know about you, that part of my life. Right. And let me tell you the other times he doesn't want you in, in his life, all right? Are you ready? Ready for this. Thanksgiving, December 24th, December 25th, December 31st, January 1st, February 14th, his birthday, yeah, he wants you in your, his life, but with these exceptions, it's it's like when you wow. try to use your frequent flyer miles and they got blackout dates. Yes, he, yeah, he wants <laughs> he you in access. his he wants you in his life, but those are the days he doesn't want you in his life. You are so true. I got nothing on Thanksgiving, none of that. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Wait, wait, where was he on Thanksgiving? With his family, and he had to really, you know, keep a low key, you know, <laughs> so he no, didn't you, call. So no calls. Did you get any text messages? No, I, the next day I got a call saying, hey, how was your Thanksgiving? Right. All right whatever. And, and your Thanksgiving was what? You were sitting at home? I was sitting at home. Eventually I did go out. You know, I had one of those, uh, what do you call it, the orphan parties. You know, I was invited right. to one of those. So. And, and how pathetic is that? It's sad. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> it's right. Sad. So there you are with a bunch of people you don't know on mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. And the mm-hmm. man you quote unquote love is with his family, the people he really loves. Yeah, that's where the real love is. Yeah. I'm not a part of that. Did he want you in his life on Thursday? 
No, no. Mm -mm. I want you in my life except on the following days. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, he's saying he's giving every excuse. And I, and, and I already know this in the back of my mind, but I needed the, re, you know, reaffirmation. Uh, he's saying it's his family. It's his parents. He's so rooted in family and godliness and all that stuff. And it's so wrong because I would have never been with him if I'd have known he was married. I seriously wouldn't have. But he manipulated. He, he was manipulative. He lied. And, uh, and now he started something he can't finish. But, but I'm ending it. But here's the deal, dear. You also, for two months, you continued having sex with this guy. And you continued oh, well. accommodating him. Well, and that's the thing. We weren't sexually like that. We were, we were intimate, but we never, like, went, you know. The you, never had, you know, but, okay. But, right. But the whole thing is, um, we still, I was, even after I knew, realized he was married, yes, I still contacted him, called him, and sent text messages and so on. Yes. You're right. right. So, so, I, so you accommodated him. Mm-hmm. I sure did. And with, even with getting a plane ticket to get out there. Right. So, uh, you see, I'm now a former philanderer, and the reason I'm a former philanderer is because of exactly what I'm telling you now. Right. I mean, what is the point of that? It's no I'm... point. He won't get a spine. <laughs> not in this lifetime. All right. So that, you, there will be no accommodations. You will not be flying to see him, driving to see him, or any well, such thing. Not, none of that. It is so. You are so right, Tom. It is over, dear. <laughs> Done. Yes. Well, you know, uh, I thank you for this because, you know, I wanted a male perspective on this, and I know that you're the king of all. So I have to talk to you about this and get really inside. And I know you're turning into the Dr. Phil right now, but this is a great point of view. I needed this. All right. And I'm going to use it. <laughs> Kathy, I, I can tell you're going to, and I, I'm, I'm proud of it. Tom like it. 1 800 5800. Tom. I need my balls reattached, Tom. The Tom Like It Show. <laughs> It's the Tom Like Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom Jr. on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hello. Yes, you busy over there? No, I'm just, uh, I didn't hear my name. My bad. <laughs> How you doing, Tom? Wonderful. Good, good. Uh,. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be getting married on uh, December the 8th. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you know, I've met my girl for uh, for about three years and a half. Been living with her for about three years. Mm -hmm. uh, she's from Guatemala. I mean, she's uh, she's good people. I mean, she I don't have to say anything to her. I mean, she cooks, cleans, you know, she takes care of me without me asking for it. So, let's I mean, I let's see what she does. Let me guess. Let's see what she does when she gets her green card. Well, yeah, that's that's one of the things. Uh, her visa was going to expire. Too. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> no, I mean I knew about it. You know, we had talked. Yeah, about well, it let's before. see. Let's see how willing she is to do all those things once she gets a green card. Okay. Well, I can't call it. I mean, I guess I have to. I'm gonna have to see it for myself. And um, while we're at it, uh, tell me about your prenup, Junior. Well, I mean, I definitely wanted to get one. I mean, I just want to be safe. I'm sorry. You want to get one? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, December eighth is like right around the corner, isn't it? Right. So, what have you been waiting for? I mean, just uh, uh, this thing just got set up at the last minute, so that's why I just wanted to uh, get one right away. What, didn't you know her visa was going to expire? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to expire sometime in January, or in February, I'm sorry, but... Well, wait, uh, wait a minute. Why, why didn't you, like, look further ahead uh, to the possibility that she would force you to get married? Because uh, she was kind of concerned that maybe new laws were going to take on effect on January 1st. So, you know, just to make everything finalized by, you know... Yeah, but you knew you were going to have to marry her at some point, or she was going back, right? Well, I mean, she, she took a chance uh, before then. Uh, her visa expired. She went back. And, you know, she still stuck around. Oh, my God. Yeah, good luck to you. The Tom Likas Show.